What is going on guys? Welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video and I'm a little bit late to the party but this is my official first venture into the new KSP 1.8 update, uh, more boosters, which as the name implies adds more boosters among other things but one of the things it adds is indeed more boosters, specifically more SRBs which is a feature that we've been asking for for a, a quite a while and it's nice that they finally added some bigger solid rocket motors. What this means is that we can finally build space shuttles realistically. When I say space shuttles I mean the NASA kind, not the uh, Russian variety which didn't use solid rocket motors. Uh, the NASA one did though. You know the NASA space shuttle had the big solid boosters on the side of it. Traditionally Kerbal Space Program has never had boosters that are correctly scaled to make realistically sized shuttles so what I always did in the past was just strap four boosters together to kind of create a single booster. Another solution that I saw a lot of people employ was just using the 2.5 meter liquid fuel tanks and just using liquid fueled rockets as the side boosters. Either way, if you went with solid rocket motors versus liquid fuel, you'd always be making a compromise of having a perfect space shuttle replica. But that is no more, my friends, because now we finally have the correct size for a solid rocket motors for a NASA-style space shuttle. So that's what we're going to be doing in this video. Here you can see me constructing the orbiter here. It's pretty much a carbon copy of my Tatsu space shuttle that I think I published that video in 2017. So a while ago, so I think it's probably due a refresh anyway. Couple of changes. The original Tatsu had a jet engine at the back just to help uh, people get it back to the runway, but this time I decided, no, we'll just glide it. If we're going to be getting realistic, we may as well go all the way and glide it back to the uh, runway rather than, you know, use engines. And uh, think I think that's the only change, to be honest. <laughs> there are a couple of things that make this not that realistic in terms of being a clone of the NASA Space Shuttle for one. Thing. I'm using Terriers as the vacuum engines. In reality, the NASA Space Shuttle used monopropellant, but the monopropellant engines in Kerbal Space were a bit weedy. I wanted something with a bit more power, so I'm using liquid fuel and oxidizer for our vacuum maneuvers rather than a monopropellant. And we have those front ele elevators as well, which the real shuttle didn't have. I don't think they're actually needed, to be honest, but... I've added them anyway just to help keep our nose lifted as we approach the runway for our landing. And I think that's it, actually. I think everything else is pretty good. I think I got the look right. I think I got the overall scale of it okay. So there's that. Now we're building the fuel tank itself. Now there is a new colour scheme for those big parts there. They can be painted orange to match the uh, colour of the NASA external fuel tank. But I'm using the uh, Mark III fuselage piece as well to kind of I don't really know, actually. I just <laughs> that's the original Tatsu used the Mark III uh, fuel tank pieces as well as the cylindrical rocket pieces, and I always liked the way that looked, so I decided to do that again. And it makes it look it looks a little bit more unique to me, you know. So that's kind of why I went with this look. But little known fact, uh, the first I believe it was the first two space shuttle launches that NASA did did in fact launch with a white external fuel tank because they used to paint it and then they realized they could save a lot of money and a lot of weight by not painting it and just leaving it orange so there you go there were a couple of space shuttle launches with white external fuel tanks so let's say that this is a replica of those missions very specifically although this mission is not a replica of any nasa space shuttle mission because we're going to be extending our space station so actually yes that is something that the space shuttle did quite a lot of but at least not in this kind of capacity the rotating ring station that we have in low Kerbin orbit has, you know, a lot of habitation modules and a lot of fuel, but we can always add more fuel, you know. This update is about adding more stuff. Let's add more fuel <laughs> to the to the space station. So that's what we're doing here. I'm adding a little crew module as well. I like to think of it in my head cannon as a sort of engineering quarters for that specific fuel reserve. I don't know, or like a way of accessing the pumps if you wanted to service it. Something like that. Uh, I tend to sort of make up in my head what's inside those uh, habitation modules and not rather than them just being, you know, seating. Yeah, you know, just extended it out a little bit just to give it some SAS control, battery power and a probe core so we can dock this thing to the space station autonomously. Uh, and obviously we need monopropellant thrusters as well. It will have to be getting uh, high off its own supply, so to speak. Uh, it will be using its own monopropellant in order to dock itself to the station. But we kind of want to leave it 
attached to the station with a full tank of monopropellant. So we're gonna read, we're gonna top it up with the space shuttle itself once it's docked uh, to give it a full tank of fuel. So we're gonna enter the map screen here and select the Ferris station as our target, and we're gonna walk around. I usually like to wait until it's about over that little peninsula on the continent to the left of the Kerbal Space Center. That's just how, that's just the kind of window I try and aim for. And we can get ready to launch. And you may notice, actually, first of all, we did boop the, the launch tower a little bit there. There's a little purple thing. Can you see it there floating? It's a bit of a graphical glitch. That's because I still got a few graphics mods installed, and I think it did make the game look a bit weird. By the way, did you see how detailed the ground is around the space center? That's one of the other things this update has added. It's added enhanced visual uh, ground appearances. <laughs> That could have done with some scripting, couldn't it? But the ground looks better in, I think it's Juna, Ike, Mun, Minmus, Eve, and Gilly, and Kerbin, obviously. I think they're the only places that have had that treatment so far, but I will have to check this, and maybe next week we could do a more comprehensive overview of the 1.8 update. No, but as I was saying, you may have noticed that uh, a few things might look a bit off. So there was that floating purple thing just then when we launched, and also when we opened the map view and when we get into low Kerbin orbit. The colours look a bit off. Kerbin's got this weird sort of purple hue to it. I don't know if that's the mods kind of not working correctly, and the clouds themselves. You can see they look a bit Minecraft-esque. <laughs> I think that's just the, the shaders aren't working properly. I had to uninstall, uninstall Scatterer. That completely broke. I think Planet Shine was a bit working a bit iffy as well, so at the moment I've just got Astronomer's Visual Pack and Environmental Visual Enhancements. But there they go, our brand new SRBs have fulfilled their purpose and we can now detach them and let them harmlessly smash into the ocean. Hopefully there's no dolphins or turtles down there at the site of impact, but let's press on and not worry about that. That's pretty much actually everything that's going to be showcased in this video with regard to the new update, I don't think there's any other showcase. No, actually, there is something I need to showcase because this mission is to fulfill a few objectives. The first main objective of this mission is to expand the fuel reserves of the space station. It's also to show you guys the new boosters, but also do some vital engineering works to the space station's rotors. For those that haven't seen the space station before, you may have been wondering why it's called the Ferris Station. And that's because it has two rotating habitation, like gravity rings, in order to simulate artificial gravity to make a nice, good environment for our Kerbals and you know, make sure they don't get any muscle atrophy or anything like that. However, I kind of messed up the action groups when I built the station. And you, in order to start and stop the rings, you have to zoom right in and move the camera into the guts of the space station itself and then manually activate the rotors one at a time. It's a real faff and a real pain and every single time you enter or leave physics range of the station the motors always reset and so you have to keep doing it over and over again. But with the new Kerbal Space Program 1.8 update they have finally added the ability to change action groups mid-flight, which I gotta be honest, I, d I don't know why it took this long, but I'm very grateful it is finally here. It's funny how we're all still we're getting all these amazing improvements. It is a bit unfortunate that it's so close to the release of the new game we're now getting all these things, but at least, you know, better late than never, I say. So here I am just deactivating all of our elevating surfaces. surfaces. Not necessary really, but it makes it look a little bit cleaner. I've also locked the gimbal of those vector engines because we won't be needing them anymore. We're going to be using the Terrier engines for the rest of this mission. And when it comes to, you know, flying back to the space station, space station, space center runway, uh, we'll just be gliding. We won't need any engine power to get there. Or will we? Got to keep a few twists in store. We won't. Uh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to bait you like that. We can, we glide back. This, this mission went swimmingly given the fact that it was quite rushed. Anyone that follows me on Instagram will know my situation as to why this video kind of came a bit later than everyone else's. I'm currently doing major renovation works to my house and the office is a bit out of commission right now. So I had to sort of cobble this together in between sort of me painting coats of paint, <laughs> funnily enough, on the walls, letting it dry, quickly do a bit of Kerbal Space Program for a for like 40 minutes to an hour and then going back and doing more painting and more sanding and building furniture so it's kind of been a real mess this week but I've, i'm i'm happy with how this mission came out and i hope you'll agree it's it's looking okay i'm currently recording this on saturday morning so it is my hope that this video goes live within the next couple of hours so if you're watching this at the time of upload 
I will probably now be working on my house again. So I won't read your comments for a couple of days, maybe. That's, I don't know why I felt that. It's just to highlight this. This is just what's going on in my life. I like to keep the uh, connection between viewer and creator as open as possible. If you want to follow me on Instagram, I post lots of, it's awful, but I, I post a lot of low effort pictures there. But it, it's, I, it's a nice way to see what I'm doing if that's the sort of thing you care about. If you just care about my Kerbal Space Broom content and not me, that's also fine. I get it. You don't have to follow me on Instagram, but you do need to smash that like button because this is what we have to do on YouTube apparently is tell everyone to smash the like button so please guys every smash of the like button is another prayer for me <laughs> I don't know I'm just kind of stalling time really because we're getting to the main crux of this video which is of course docking the orange tank to the space station now you may have noticed that this space shuttle does not have any more repellent thrusters itself that's because I just think it looks a bit messy having RCS blocks just there on on the uh, pieces there it doesn't look very realistic which is especially frustrating because that mark 3 cockpit i believe does have monopellant thrusters built into it but they're just cosmetic they don't actually function although i'm squinting i can't see any maybe they removed it I, i'm pretty sure originally when this piece was first added to the game it had monopellant ports but they were completely non-functional it would be nice maybe if they did this what they did with the mark 3 cockpit mark 3 command pod even and that is you know make them functional but for now we have to use RCS blocks. So I decided to just not bother with monopellant and we'll just dock this space shuttle uh, the hard way because I hate myself. <laughs> First thing we need to do though is dock the uh, module to the space station, which we can do with monopellant thrusters. But there was a bit of a hitch. I uh, undocked and then it bounced back and then redocked itself to the back of the space shuttle. And for some reason, this started accelerating us upwards and it caused us to smash into the space station. I don't know why. Maybe I've discovered some new form of crack and drive where if you undock and then redock apart, it accelerates you upwards by one meter per second. Not a very good crack and drive, but a crack and drive nonetheless. We can reload that quick save and try again. What I did was I just uh, right clicked the docking port and set the docking acquire force to zero. And I hope that they wouldn't automatically dock together. And it worked. Success. So now we can get this thing clear of the sh shuttle cargo bay and get ready to dock it. So I wanted to dock it to, uh, I wanted to dock the habitation module to the space station because then it would be more believable that Kerbals could directly transfer. Although looking at the piece I'm docking it to, uh, they would have to transfer through an ore tank and a battery and an SAS unit. So maybe not that realistic in retrospect, but Regardless, I think it looks a bit cleaner to have, you know, if a, sh if a ship was going to dock to a fuel tank, it would look better if it was docking directly to the, f the, the fuel tank rather than, I don't know, have the fuel having to transfer through a um, habitation module. It's a shame that there are no other size docking ports on this tank. A ship can only dock to it if it also has a senior docking port, but if you looked to the other fuel tank on this space station that's there to serve as a refueling bay that one does have lots of docking ports so i figured this can just be a backup reserve tank for the other one so that's that's the purpose of this i mean realistically i'm probably never going to use these tanks uh, for refueling so it's all there just for the just to just for the bragging rights of saying i have this big station in orbit and it's running really well by the way have you noticed how well ksp 1.8 handles things there was a i think there was an engine upgrade and the game runs a lot faster and much smoother and it's great like this is completely lag free and i remember back in day when the game first was in its infancy this would have caused the frame rate to tank granted when i first started playing this game i was playing it on my laptop which was uh terrible i think the graphic the cpu was some rubbish 1.7 gigahertz dual core thing and the graphics card was a gt640 mobile edition it's not even a gtx card it was it was awful it was a second hand laptop from 2012 and my first ksp videos were actually recorded on that laptop so if you look at any of my videos from 2015 then they will look terrible i did a, i think they look all right in terms of frame rate because i would just speed them up in post uh, but I have to speed them up like 12 times for the footage in order to be like watchable. I remember having a GameCube on my desk next to my laptop and as I was launching a rocket I would just play a Zelda game or something whilst the launch was happening because I would regularly run at like 4 FPS and that's not even an exaggeration that was pretty much the standard. By the way, here I am docking to the docking board. It was a bit of a tricky process getting the space shuttle lined up to, uh, you know, be perpendicular to the docking port so we could coast towards it without having monopellant thrusters, but it worked out all right. So 
there you are. There's an example of docking a space shuttle to a space station without monopropellant. I know it's not a very realistic take on the whole space shuttle docking procedure, but, you know, I've already said that this thing does take some artistic liberties over the NASA shuttle, so I, I wasn't too worried about having a uh, slightly less conventional method of docking. Now, I paused the commentary just then to take a sip of my drink or something, and uh, I thought, I, well, I'm sure I took a video of me playing Kerbal Space Program back in the day when I was like 19 at university, and I found a video of me playing KSP on my old setup, so here it is. <laughs> it was a bit of a revision nest, I was coming up to exams, so the desk was a bit messy and cluttered, but here is my, uh, my, my old Kerbal Space Program uh, gaming setup. <laughs> but yeah, wasn't that a little blast to the past from 19-year-old Matt there? Thank you very much for recording that. I don't know why I felt compelled to, but I guess it worked out pretty good in the end. So, here we are, toggling the action group. You know, I said earlier that I messed up the action groups of these rotors. We can now fix it using the action group editor, which is extremely intuitive. I know there are mods that would allow you to modify action groups mid-flight, but I always found them quite difficult to get the hang of because I'm an idiot. But this is brilliant. It's basically exactly the same as the vehicle assembly building action group editor. And it's really, really easy to switch out action groups, which is great. So there we are. There are the rotating rings. We can now toggle them using action group 6, I believe. I've already forgotten which number I bound it to, but it doesn't matter. All that matters is it works. And there is a lovely cinematic overview of the space station. So as you can see, it's getting pretty nifty. You know, it's getting pretty big and expansive. And the footage that you're watching right now is not sped up. This is all captured in real time and rendered in real time as well. And I'm sure you can see that it's running pretty smoothly. I don't know what frame rate this is, and I, I can't be bothered to reach over for the mouse and check, so, but I think the footage can speak for itself that it looks a darn sight better than how older versions of KSP might handle crafts of this size, especially given that it has moving parts. So I'm happy. Thank you. Thank you, KSP 1.8. Uh, now it's time to say, nope, it's not time to say goodbye just yet because there is one other thing we need to do, and that is, you know, I said earlier, we need to top up those monopellant tanks with the space shuttle. That's the main reason why we needed to dock the space shuttle to the station itself, so we could do the fuel transfer. And there it is. And now the space station has full monopellant tanks. We can get ready to disembark. I think you can see me doing a quick pan around just to make sure there's no other monopellant tanks that might need a top up, but I think I was satisfied so we can time warp around. I'm just warping a bit actually, just to make sure that the Kerbal Space Center is definitely going to be in the day when we land. It's not essential, but it's good for videos because videos always look better when they're bright and yeah, everything's easy to see, especially given that YouTube's like video compression algorithms generally make videos darker. So I try and do as much as I can on the light side of planets rather than, you know, at night. So that's why I waited a bit there. But now we can get ready to deorbit ourselves. So we're going to use the Terrier engines again. We don't need to use the Vector engines. It's not going to take much just to deorbit ourselves, but look at that. There goes the space station, and we're going to just watch our orbital line. We are going to be passing directly over the Kerbal Space Center, so our actual inclination is correct. But once we establish that was fine, we can get ready to uh, get this thing prepared for atmospheric flight again. So the first thing I'm going to do is deactivate the Terriers, and I locked the gimbal as well just to make it look a little, little, little bit cleaner on the descent, and we can also reactivate the elevators. I'm going to leave the front canards deactivated. Although they are activated there, but I'm pretty sure I did go back and deactivate them again because it was getting a bit... The space shuttle did have a bit of a tendency to flip. This was... I'm not I'm not going to lie to you. I did have to do this twice. The first time the space shuttle flipped on re-entry. So the second time I attempted it, I disabled the front canard and pumped as much fuel as I could into the forward tanks to try and shift the center of mass further forward. The further back your center of mass, the more flip happy your space planes and shuttles and other flying vehicles will be. I don't think it would have made that much difference, to be honest, because all the tanks are in such close proximity to each other. But every little helps, as they say. And yeah, there's not much more to add. We can coast down. You can see that, actually there, that purplish hue. I don't know if that's a bug or if the mod that I'm using just happens to induce a bit more of a purple t tint and scatter always masked that. I'm not sure. I will address my visual mods for next week, hopefully. This week, unfortunately, I didn't have much time to do much modification to my game data file i just needed to get the footage together to make this wonderful video i hope that i hope it's been enjoyable and yeah 
just looking at those clouds. They do look bad, don't they? Uh, I, I'm guessing that over the next few weeks as well, mods will get better and better. You may have noticed, actually, the lack of Kerbal Engineer readouts in this video. That's because the Kerbal Engineer doesn't work with this update. It kind of works to an extent. Like, it works a bit in the space plane hangar and vehicle assembly building, but it doesn't give you the in-flight readouts. For the space... I probably should have mentioned this during the ascent, but during the space shuttle ascent, I wouldn't need to use the map screen because the... Uh, Apoapsis height and time to apoapsis and all that are in stock KSP now. If you click the little purple button on that staging panel on the bottom left of the screen, it gives you the apoapsis details that you need to do a map screenless ascent. And if you, I guess, I guess if you rewind the video, you can see that. That's how I did that, in case any of you are wondering how I was able to do a good ascent, well, you know, a, a satisfactory <laughs> ascent without the map screen. Uh, and speaking of ascents, the opposite of that is descents, and that is what we've just done. Not the best re-entry I did overshoot the runway a bit and had to do some messy spinning to try and slow ourselves down nice and rapidly. Once we touch down, we can slow ourselves down a bit more realistically. We can deploy those drogue chutes to let the space shuttle coast to a nice gentle stop. Hopefully we won't run out of runway space. There we go, and our Kerb was a happy- so yeah, there's that, that, that was the video. I hope you enjoyed this mission. I'm sorry that it had to kind of be rushed out a bit. I would have liked to have done a bit more of an in-depth, more boosters coverage video, but unfortunately real life just sometimes gets in the way. Regardless, I was still very excited to try and build a realistic space shuttle, and I hope you enjoyed this endeavor with me. I'm going to leave some links on screen if you'd like to watch those. You're more than welcome to, but don't feel obliged, you know? Remember to smash that like button. <laughs> and, uh, I'm joking, of course. There are some links in descriptions as well if you want to check out Discord, Twitter, Instagram, Patreon. What else is in there? The clothing, merchandise, lots of things in the description for you to take a gander at. I'm going to leave it there, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, and indeed your time in 1.8.